It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's another beautiful round table. Hopefully you guys are enjoying yourself this evening. And as I promised you all before, we have another guest tonight. And I'll get to him in just a second or two. And of course, I want you guys, if you're watching on Twitch, make sure you ask questions. Don't be afraid. This is your time to ask questions of a gentleman who owns a really great band who does events and does weddings. And if you're watching this over on YouTube, first thing first, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the bell icon and make sure you subscribe to the channel. And so that way you know what's going on in the channel. This always drops on Mondays at 12 noon. And I always am live on Twitch at 8 o'clock central time here in beautiful Chicagoland. And uh, we would like for you to come over on Twitch if you can to stop by and talk. If not, don't worry about it. Ask questions down below. Do me that favor. But first thing first, I have to welcome our guest, Dave Rothstein with Dave Rothstein Music. Uh, Dave, always great to see you. Uh, I know we were talking for a minute or two. Uh, we just saw each other uh, probably about a month, a month and a half ago at a uh, wedding show, but it's always great to see you. And a little thing here, Dave has done plenty of weddings with uh, some celebrities, and I'm going to ask Dave a few questions about that stuff in a little bit. But uh, some of the famous, a couple of people you probably know. Uh, but Dave, tell a bit more about your business and what you do and the fun things that you have over there at your band. Sure. Well, th first of all, thank you so much for having me on, buddy. And I really appreciate uh, you having a show like this. And I think the more that uh, DJs and bands and other vendors kind of communicate and talk about things, uh, the better understanding all of us will have for creating better events for our clients. Uh, so I started, I'm actually a bass player, and I used to play bass with the Glenn Miller Orchestra and Tommy Dorsey Orchestra. i uh, played in Japan, South America, all over the United States. Also played in a klezmer band, and we did tours of London, Munich, Vienna, Amsterdam, Carnegie Hall, Lincoln Center, uh, uh, tons of <laughs> weddings and bar mitzvahs. And when I got off the road from touring, um, I started playing bass with a lot of the quote unquote top wedding bands in Chicago. And I found they were pretty much doing the same wedding for everybody. And they were, you know, good sounding bands, but it was something that wasn't really personal. And it was kind of like going to Starbucks or McDonald's or something. And I really enjoy people and I love their unique stories, what makes them uh, quirky and different personalities and ethnicities and backgrounds and ages. And I felt people really should be able to desert to express who they are uh, much more. So that's why I started our music company 25 years ago. This is our 25th year. Um, and over that time, uh, we have seen a great deal of change in the industry and especially in the way uh, marketing is done. And a lot of the times, you know, the way events are uh, put together as well. But the thing I've always concentrated on is giving people a wedding and the songs and the music that really fits them perfectly, that isn't based on fads and trends and trying to impress their friends and stuff. Um, and so right now I've kind of transitioned about maybe 10 years ago from playing bass and doing the announcements and running things to just getting them, giving them another guy to play bass. So my only job is to act as the MC. And right, ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the entrance, you know, all that kinds of stuff, um, which frees me up to be able to go talk to the photographer, the uh, video person, the caterer, the venue, the bride and groom, if they have questions. And the band loves it because they just get to concentrate on just playing music. Um, and I do a lot of unique personal touches where I find out information about the couples and I create personalized gifts. For example, we had a couple that met at University of Richmond in biochemistry class. So I called the university, got a hold of their professor, and I bought the version of the textbook they used when the couple took the class together seven years ago. We learned to play the University of Richmond fight song, and I had all their 300 guests sign the textbook, and we gave it to them at the end of the night. Um, so things like that that makes it a much more human kind of experience. We also donate all the wedding flowers after the weddings we play for to nursing homes and homeless shelters. Um, so I'm very high tech with every Apple gadget known to mankind and every uh, uh, big website and, and social media following. 
and technology, but I also really want to hold on to the old school things of, you know, we all want to have our grandparents read us a story and we want to feel like their wedding is telling their own story and not uh, based on keeping up with the Kardashians, you know. Um, so I think whatever success we've had has been based on giving everybody their own wedding and everybody who works the wedding, whether it's a DJ or a florist, or the bride and groom or the musicians, comes away from that wedding that this is something great that we all shared together um, and not something that was just another gig in the 26th that we just cross off in our calendar. Um, so I, I put a lot of emotion and a lot of effort into making sure uh, that, you know, I treat all the vendors with a great deal of respect and help the bride and groom uh, as much as much as possible. So, um, yeah, I really want to try to, my, our motto is like, we celebrate you uh, because that's all that people care about is not, impressing people that they've never met before. It's about giving them something that belongs to them. And so when they're talking to their kids or grandkids about their wedding, you know, they're not talking about the bows in the back of the chairs and the, and the uh, cocktail shrimp that they had that was delicious. It's about how you feel and how authentic that wedding was. And that's, that's kind of what we're, our music company is really all about. And that's the one thing is that um, I've always said that DJs, should they should and then unfortunately not all of them do but it should kind of uh, customize every single wedding for that client and just like you said going back to a university and getting a book and getting you know learning the fight song for that uh for that university that kind of stuff those little touches of that mean a lot to that couple and they remember that and i i could tell you um you know, at your at the wedding show, and I know at plenty of other um, events you've you've done, uh, having you know cocktail music live, having someone sit there and playing music, just a, even just acoustic or singing and uh, playing acoustic, and then going into a full set with the rest of the band. I feel that you know that right there has a great feel to it. Uh, I know some people like to split weddings, and they like to do okay a band for like cocktail dinner. And then maybe the first part and then go into like the last part of it, uh, a, a dance group, uh, you know, they want dancing, they want EDM, they want, you know, that kind of stuff or they want kind of feel. So it's it's one of the things I feel that working with other vendors is very important. Photographers, videographers, band leaders, you know, whoever it is, uh, caterers is a very crucial part of anyone who does events. Now, if you're doing a bar, even doing a bar and stuff like that, you have a band coming into a bar. And they're doing music. You may have to do sets between when they take breaks. Uh, and that's the other thing also is talking to someone like yourself, who is the leader of the group of the band and say, Hey, you know, when do you take breaks? When do you take a break, are you doing music? Or am I doing music? So that way, you know, what's going on. Communication is very key. And that's one of the reasons why I want you on here. So that way people can ask questions and make sure that line of communication is there. And plus also, so you can help, some DJs who have not worked with bands before so they can understand what to expect when they do work with a band and not be afraid. It's, oh, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. I want them to feel comfortable and ask questions. So as someone who deals with every every kind of event, every kind of venue, every kind of uh, thing going on, if a DJ walked up to you and introduced themselves, say, hey, I'm, my, I'm DJ so-and-so or I'm John or whatever their name is, on the DJ tonight, what would be some of the things you would love for them to ask you? Sure, sure. And uh, just just in full disclosure, we actually use a DJ ourselves with our own music company. So typically we would have our own DJ. But if there is a situation where they've hired a separate DJ, uh, I would sit down and, and ideally doing this prior to the actual wedding itself, going through the schedule and saying like, these are the points where we need DJ music for the introductions of the bridal party, you know, and these are the specific, the songs for each, uh, for the bridal party itself, for each individual couple. Uh, and then they want a separate song for the parents. So going through those songs, the things that are uh, specific to what we need from them, you know, and it's kind of like a, a big play, uh, you know, so each, each portion of like, okay, the DJ does this particular portion. Now the band does this. And now we have this thing happens and we need. So kind of identifying where they come in, what their role, what their role is in that particular setting. 
uh, what the type of music um, that we, the vibe that we want to be doing for that particular aspect of that uh, of the wedding, um, and where they come in and we come in. So it's not it's never going to be a battle. It's really about like um, I'm okay, you're okay, and let's both do our roles to collectively make for a great event. So uh, one of the things is talking about different songs. We don't want to have you guys playing a song that our band is going to be planning on playing, you know. So during, while the band's playing, you can be listening to, to, to the band um, and saying, oh, this is, this is a song I was planning on playing. Well, now that I hear that, I'm not going to play it, you know. Or um, maybe there are some songs that the bride and groom had requested that I think maybe this song would be better as for the DJ to play. So I'll say, you know, uh, Brentley, I want you to play. Here are four songs they requested, but we don't, we're not able to play it. Maybe it's got some EDM to it or something. So we have uh, passed that over to you guys. So that way we both win, you know. So we're doing what we do, and you guys are able to do what you do, and everybody wins that way. They get all those songs that aren't great band songs per se. You get to play the things that make, uh, you know, the DJ sound uh, as a DJ should. And um, I think that kind of teamwork, because, you know, when somebody comes into a wedding and with a giant ego or I'm DJ this or I, I'm, you know, this or whatever, it's like that's not the environment, you know, and know your, know your place and what your function is. Because when you're at a club, when you're at some place where you are, hey, you're the hot guy and everybody is related to what, you're controlling things, but when you walk into a wedding and you've got five, six, seven different vendors, you have to figure out what your role is, what your goal is, and and what's going to be quote unquote successful for what you're doing uh, for that. And the best way is to know when is your time to come in and do your DJ thing, and when is the time to to give that up and let the band kind of do take the lead there. So that that's one thing. Um, and then as a MC is for them to, to, to DJs to know when the schedule is um, and um, understanding of when they're going to be uh, coming in, what, what songs we need from them, how long those songs should be. Sometimes a bride and groom will say, like, we need to start at one minute, 15 seconds and end at two minutes, 38 seconds. So you got to have that level of detail or they request a specific song. Like um, Forever Young, well, there's, you know, there's four or five different versions of that song. So you want the Rod Stewart version um, or do you want, you know, there's a number of different artists that do that. So that level of detail, that's what makes a pro versus a, a guy who happens to be, you know, a DJ, whatever. He used to, you know, works at this other place and now we just DJ on the side. But if you want to be a real pro like Buddy you know, is that level of detail. And that's what luxury is. Luxury isn't about having gold chains and some expensive equipment. It's about the level of paying attention to details. That's what real luxury is. And that's that's one of the things that I, I try to communicate here is to help. And again, the show is about helping DJs become better DJs. And uh, we got some a little bit of chat down below down here, and I'll get that in a second. And everyone here, I, I, I've I've seen their stuff. I've I've know I you know got to work with some of them. Um, I've seen them at things. I see how they handle themselves. And I can say that everyone here uh, is the type of person that gets down to the details, things like that. And I can tell you, my personally with, with Tracy, uh, we've gotten down to you know <laughs> I want to start one minute and fifteen seconds. I want to start one minute and five. We've all done that, and that's the great thing about. I'm glad to see that you're just as detailed as what we are, which is great and makes our life easier. And having someone such as yourself there who does that and understands that. Now, in our in our aspects, Tracy, my wife, she does a coordination time management side of things. So she is the, the coordinator and she usually coordinates the night. So she would work, like in our case, work with you. I handle light style music side of things. As far as MC work, that would be something we would work with you on and something like that. And that's one of the things, again, communication is important. This is why it's important to talk to people way in advance 
and making sure everything's done so that way the day show up. If Dave is Dave is doing all the MC work, I know for a fact I need to support Dave. If I'm doing some MC work, if Tracy's doing some MC work and Dave's doing some MC work, who's doing what part? We know way in advance. And that's a great, that's a great point. So I want to start off with uh I'm gonna start off with Taylor and Jordan because they have a little background in uh live music as well as Brentley does. But I'm gonna start with the two of them. Uh do you have any questions you would like to ask? uh dave here about working with a uh band at a special event taylor have you ever had any like real bad experiences yeah i mean i've had, I've had experiences where where um a dj will kind of get into their own world you know mm -hmm. and they're kind of doing their thing and they're like not really paying attention to what is going on in the weddings or Sometimes things like um, that aren't even directly involved with the wedding or they'll they'll start like bossing people around, like uh, loading in, loading out and and uh, and just kind of not really spec respecting the venue or the space or something. So I think coming in uh, to, with a little bit more humility um, is, is in that and a sense of like teamwork. How can I help? makes the difference for solving those problems uh per se but i'm a pretty flexible guy so if some dj wants to play a few extra songs um to do that that's fine i haven't really had any you know big arguments with people i just got to get a sense of who i'm dealing with and i just kind of adapt to uh and the same thing with you know different venues like okay i'm at this kind of place that isn't exactly the you know the most aware of of things so i just kind of adjust and I think the ability to just come in with a positive attitude and 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 say, um, you know, this is somebody else's house that I'm doing this this venue is somebody else's house, and I've got to go by their loading, whether we like it or not. They want us to take this back elevator, and we have to go through this door, and we have to set up quietly, and we have to, you know, store things in a place that maybe is a little further away than we want to. Um, I think a lot of it really has to do with attitude and preparation. Um, and I think the success of any event that you're doing, 85% of it is in the preparation. And the other 15% is adapting to things you weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. And if you can come in with, you know, having done your homework, having been prepared, and then have a little bit of flexibility with that, like, so this, you thought it was going to be this door and you have to go through this door now, or like, you have to take the stairs instead of the elevator. Well, you know what? Sometimes you have to be able to deal with that. And that is just part of being a pro and uh, doing, you know, thousands of events like I have all over the country in all kinds of different <laughs> situations. You have to be as prepared as you can and you have to be um, as aware of, hey, I need to adjust to things. And this is not what I kind of expected, but, you know, I'm, I can talk about it later when I get home um to people but at the time i think you really have to kind of work together and that's an important that's a very important thing is that you know uh i could tell you that uh i've run into situations that i can and i'm lucky to have someone there i can talk to my wife <laughs> she's my 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 life partner as well as my uh my business partner my partner in crime in life but uh and when i mean by that we you know we could we do everything together but you know, it's, sometimes it's nice I can vent to her and say I'm I I I guess I'm frustrated with something and help work through things, and talk to her to have that level headedness sometimes, and you know this way you know with other professionals not taking on them not taking on a facility or not doing that kind of stuff, but work through things and overcome those problems and that's an important thing, is understand that and you know it's it's very important and Dave I I I don't think you're. I, all the times I've ever met you, I've talked to you tons of times. You never seem like a person that ever gets upset. You're just a a very nice professional person that has a great humor and always has a great joke and just very very chill person. So I can never see you getting upset for anything. Um, and I, I I love that about you. <laughs> I, I really appreciate that. And, and there are certainly times where I, I do feel that internally, but I may not express it. So I think when you have and we've all come across situations. I'm guessing Dwayne has seen a few things in his day of situations of like, uh, oh my God, like what is this? But instead of 
concentrate on the problem. You say, what do I have to do to figure this out? Okay. What is the result right now? I mean, later I could talk about, oh, this guy, that, or this should. Right now, what do I have to do to resolve this? Right? What do I need okay. to do to fix the problem? That's important. And, and then you can deal with all the other stuff later. But right now, house is on fire. I got to put this house out. Later, I can talk about what caused it and the wiring and all this stuff. But right now, the immediate thing, and it doesn't matter whose fault it is, why this, all that stuff does not matter. You got to deal with the situation that's happening right now. And it, it, we just uh, saw that at uh, Coachella with a DJ. Something screwed up somehow. It screwed up her BPMs. I know uh, Brentley's laughing at it. Um, <laughs> a lot of DJs, you know, I'm not going either side if she's wrong or wrong, whatever. It happened. And again, that's understanding that going into something, you're doing something live in front of people. Things happen. Accidents happen. Stuff gets unplugged. Computers screw up. Sub -corrupt, files get corrupted. It's understanding, okay, this happened. What do I need to do to fix that? Mr. Dixon, I know that uh, yourself as a music teacher and uh, someone who is also a DJ uh, has had problems with a few things here and there uh, and have overcome many, uh, many, many different uh, obstructions. But uh, the question to you, sir, yeah, since we have Dave here and he's great to be here, uh, what questions you have for a band leader if you're going to do a an event with? So if you're going to do a special event, what questions you have for Dave tonight? Well, all the events that I've done so far, it, we share like a time um slot. But I've noticed that because I'm with um Quake um hackers and DJ Volt, and, and lately on their Twitch um streams, uh, one of the DJ's wives they play together. So I'm wondering, have you ever did that before? And if you have, what kind of preparation and rehearsals do you and the um DJ play as far as they play a song, and uh, um, I think she plays saxophone or guitar. She plays right along with the song. It's almost like they're performing as oh. uh, you know an ensemble. So, what kind of like rehearsal times and prep do you have to do to do that? Pull that off. Uh, we actually don't don't rehearse very much because we are performing so much, um, and uh, the talent level of the of the musicians are just just incredible. And like I said, a lot of it is the preparation. I will send. If we get new arrangements that are done, we'll send them the music electronically, uh, the actual sheet music, and they'll be kind of prepared that way. Um, and in terms of, um, you know, if somebody comes in and they have an ensemble, like a DJ sax duo, let's say, uh, it's just really a matter of communication. Like everything else is like, you know, we, we we're going to play from, we're going to take a break at 9.10. You guys take over and uh, make sure we're not really crossing over in terms of song wise and uh, letting, giving them their time to shine, you know, and that's, and then you give us our time to shine and then you get your time to shine. And so it's not a competition or anything. I and mean, we've done big Greek weddings where they brought in their own Greek DJ, you know? And so we've said, okay, let's do, we're going to play until, you know, uh, 7.35. You'll take a break. You play until 7.50 or so. And then we'll come in. And so it's really just a matter of communication, kind of regardless whether it's a DJ sax duo um, or a solo DJ, whatever the ensemble is, we want to give their time to shine and to do their thing. And then we'll do our thing. And, um, you know, I want everybody to to have to have their time to be able to do what do what they do best. And that that's and again, very, all, um, that's a very I'm important ask, Do you all like um, I know. There was a couple of times where a couple had asked me to like provide sound for whoever they had to um, play, but they weren't really, a, I would say, a band band. But when you get into multiple instruments outside, like the guitar and all that, that plugs directly into oh, a see, mixer, okay. like what kind of like mics and all that other kind of stuff to help kind of like with that? Yeah, the, that's uh, some preparation stuff, and that's really important to do. If the DJ, if you guys as DJs need to plug into our sound system, uh, that's something where I'm going to have you connect with one of our sound uh, sound guys so that we're not at the gig trying to figure out, you know, what instruments you have. If you need to borrow, 
a um, like we had a groom that wanted to play guitar. His dream was to play guitar his own wedding. And so he loved Guns N' Roses. So we did a six minute transcription of November Rain for him to play with our 14 piece orchestra. We gave him two free lessons and we figured out, you know, what kind of, you know, guitar he wanted to use and all this kinds of stuff. And uh, then as a gift, I got him a black glossy guitar that had all the 300 guests sign the guitar and we gave it to him as a gift. But in terms of technical stuff, that stuff you got to work out ahead of time. You don't want to be on the bandstand trying to figure out like, oh, this person needs a mic for their guitar. And so let's monkey around with it. You want to have that figured out so that it can go from our band to the Dwayne over here. And you can go right into that. Because the bride and groom, you don't want to clear their dance floor and you don't want to have them standing there for like watching us doing all this monkeying around stuff. You want to keep it as smooth as possible. So that's another thing with all the preparation for any technical things you need. If you need to tell the DJ that you need a DJ table, you need to tell them that. If you need valet parking, you need to tell them. If you need a, a vendor meal, you need to tell them about that. And if you're working with the band, who has, is, is providing the sound system, you have to know what inputs, what outputs, what types of chords, what type of uh, volume you're going to be using uh, because you don't want any surprises, you know. And I'm sure uh, Taylor and Jordan have certainly experienced a few few of those things where like, oh, no, I thought you meant this. And then it, all it was is one little communication and one chord can completely screw up your whole gig, right? So that's why you have to think through all this stuff have backups in your car. Have a, I'm sure Buddy has a complete backup of, of all the cords and power cords and whatever in your car um, so that you can resolve this stuff. But preparation for that is the key. Talk to the band leader. Say, if you're using your sound system, this is the inputs I need. These are the types of microphones I need. Then there's no surprises. And then you're just, you, know, you work it out ahead of time. And that's a, that's a key thing. And one of the reasons why, like, I, I have a van, I have, I have a Sprinter for my business is because of redundancies, having, you know, on in bins, having extra XLR cords, having quarter inch, having all those adapters. And when I do run into stuff, a lot of times it's for videographers coming in that want to record the ceremony, record, you know, the speeches and stuff like that. But the big thing with a band, who is doing audio, who's primary audio? Um, am I connecting into your system? Okay, fine, grab new XLR out. Well, your sound guy may say, I only want quarter inch in. So you gotta go XLR to quarter inch. Do I have the right adapters or do I go booth out in there? And then the other thing also, which a lot of DJs like to do, they like to put everything redlining is headlining. They put everything up to 10, which you can't do that. You have to put at proper levels. So your sound guys, I get a hot signal in and put this blaring signal out and it sounds like, like junk. You don't want to do that. So that's something you work out with way in advance and you talk to that technician and tell them what you're doing. If you really want to go full on, go 10 all the way across the board on your, your mixer, then you need to figure out something else. You, he's going to he's, he's going to, need to turn your volume way down and it's going to sound distorted. Uh, that's one thing you don't want to do. And then a couple of questions here, a couple of things here. Um, I see cool thing and I see Mikey Mike from Pennsylvania. I see cool thing from South Carolina. Um Cool thing says he never dealt with a band in his events. He's usually the only entertainer of the night. Cool thing, you got to work with a band. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, it is a fun thing to do. If you ever get a chance to do it, definitely would do it. Um, Mikey Mike, I've done, a, uh, I've done it a few times. I work with a duel for the National Night Out. It works out great. We do 40-minute sets. And uh, Mike says also in our contract for weddings, we are not uh, – if we're not being served a meal, it's an extra hundred and twenty-five dollars. Wow! Again, I, it's it's you have what's in your contract. That's some of the things again you work out with. That's with the client more than just with the band. Uh, and then you know, oh, uh, cool things that scratch that. I've worked with one band uh, at a worship band in uh, Latin festival two years ago, um, but I used my own. DJ setup at the gig. Okay. Again, see, there you go. You worked with a band. And that's one of the things I think a lot of DJs, again, are afraid of working with bands or working with other people. And, and Matt is not here. So I'm going to go to over to DJ Brentley and ask DJ Brentley, because someone who is also has been in bands and plays instruments. Um, I know you worked with bands. 
Uh, and I know you know Dave uh, from being a Chicagoan and uh, being in the industry down here for a while. Uh, you got any questions here for Mr. Rustin? You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Dave, actually, you hit every reason why I don't do live sound anymore at all. It, every reason that I kind of gave up playing in a band completely. And it was actually a conversation I was having with my daughter's mom tonight that I'm like, yeah, I could go back to playing again, but why would I sacrifice you know, DJ money versus musician money. And, and you know, yes, money? What, I, I mean, a, a, even then the conversation comes up with me, wedding money versus club money. And so, yeah, like everything you said about, you know, cabling, cleaning it up. Like, I, like, I look back as a musician, like even when I played at weddings, I will like, and you probably have gotten well beyond this, but most musicians don't take the time to clean up the chords. It looks like a rat's nest everywhere they're playing. Well, I, and I, I have, I've maybe seen, and this goes back to me booking for 14 years straight to playing and touring around that. I have seen very seldom bands that are, you know, even in the wedding industry that are really anal about how their presentation looks. Now I know you're an exception to it. Well, I mean, but... yeah, we we don't really. It's, I mean, maybe there's different different levels of different things, but uh, yeah, uh, I mean, our our guys are like, I mean, my piano, my bass player was with Ramsey Lewis for years, and and uh, so these are like world class musicians. So there's no, I take out hat. The benefit of what I'm doing now is that having been a sideman for so long, for thirty years or so, I know exactly all the stuff that they go through. So I take care of all the logistics stuff. So all our musicians have to do is plug in, play the gig, eat the gig, you know, eat, eat at the gig, get paid at the gig. I, I tip the musicians a lot of times myself, even if the client doesn't. And um, I take care of all the BS. So they just unplug, wrap up their stuff, pack up their things, handshake, they're done. There's no That's drama. Awesome. There's no, I don't, I, I mean, I, I just show up with my little backpack with my stuff and I don't, you know, set up any equipment anymore. But when I started, I did all that. I set up all the sound equipment, booked all the musicians, did all the arrangements. And I really, like, paid my dues so I know all that stuff. But I just won't deal with any, like, non-professional uh, musicians that are, I don't allow drinking or any kind of BS like that. So, and I expect the same from any other vendors, you know, that I, that I work with. You know, I'm not going to say anything to them, but, you know... I, I don't think it's real great that, that uh, a vendor is standing in line at the bar talking to the bridesmaid uh, while they're taking a break. So I, I think what we should do is, you know, we're all like professionals and we should all, if you want to be treated like professionals, act like professionals. And you wouldn't have a an accountant, you know, sitting at work with a uh, vodka and martini on his desk or anything like that. So I think if you want to be treated like a professional, act that way, have that kind of attitude. And like the same thing with individual musicians, you know, all our guys are, they understand, I will take the absolute best care of them. And all they have to do is show up with positive attitude prepared and I will take care of everything else for them. And there's always going to be different levels of musicians that, you know, leave bottles all over and do all kinds of stuff. But I just won't tolerate that kind of, kind of nonsense because, you know, it's a profession to me and I have lots of doctors and lawyers in my family and I see at that same level of professionalism. But, you know, I, I think uh, the whole wedding industry can can certainly uh, should strive for that type of uh, that level of, and that applies to everything you guys do, all your branding, all your advertising, everything you do, how you dress, um, what time you show up, how fast you get back to people in emails, um, how quick you are to respond to people when there's talking to you and how creative you are with problem solving, that is your brand, you know, and that's what makes uh, like a real professional DJ so much better than some guy that they found in some club that, Hey, can you do my wedding? You know, somebody who understands like what goes into being a really great wedding professional. Um, that's, that's what it's all about. And uh, so I think, especially, I, I, 
young guys that that are kind of like growing their stuff it's like start now and uh there's any older guys watching you know maybe think think twice about some of the things um and some ways of how you're presenting yourself uh, because all that stuff matters I think that's an important thing to hit on the nail on the head there, Dave, is if you remember the scene in the Blues Brothers, you know, the great part at uh, uh, Bob's Country Bunker when they're cleaning things up, they're pulling cables, right. XLR cables and beer bottles are falling off and the cables are everywhere. And so, you know, that right there, it's great in a movie. It's, it's a gag. It's funny. But when you see that stuff in real life, be it other DJs or other uh, band professionals or music professionals, period, that right there says a lot, and that right there also can uh, be a bad thing. And again, like it is your it is your brand out there, and then seeing you know again there are bands out there, people out there who don't care about hiding cables. There are DJs who don't care about hiding cables and don't doing things, or they think that you know drinking is great. And here's one of the things I equate that to: for is drinking on the job. If you had to walk into an emergency room and they had to put you on an emergency surgery, would you want to see your surgeon walking out of a bar with a drink in his hand coming to do surgery on you, especially a critical surgery? Or would you want your doctor to be, you know, sober, relaxed, and ready to do the right things? And that's the same thing with a band or with a DJ or any professional at a wedding. You're not there to party. You're there to, to provide a service and do a job. And when I hear about DJs drinking, I'm not a fan for it. I, I, I have the same policies for our employees uh, as you do. No drinking on the job. You know, you're, you know, we don't accept alcohol, alcoholic beverages. Uh, it's one of the things that, you know, having a, a pop, having water, uh, that's one thing. And if you're having, you know, an alcoholic beverage, you, you may want to reevaluate what you're doing. And I go, I know guys who do other things too before they go into a place. And that right there, that's what I would never recommend doing it. And because you're there to do a professional job, even if the couple says, come on, come on, come to the bar, have a, have a drink with us. Uh, I would definitely say, Hey, you know, sorry, I, I can't, I'm working for you. I can't do this. And that's one of the things also, uh, DJ, uh, APOC or DJ apocalypse, or as I know him, Tommy, uh, who I've worked with before plenty of times, uh, Tommy, since I know you, uh, do a lot of clubs right now, but you also come back to here to Chicago and we'll do some special events, uh, especially at some uh, really beautiful golf clubs. Um, what about the, with a band, if you have any questions for a band leader, what would you like to ask Dave here? Uh, yeah, so you talked about it a little bit earlier about, um, like, DJs or people plugging into uh, your guy's sound system um, and tapping in with your audio guy. Um, do you say, like, do a lot of couples that you work with or events that you work with, are they bringing you guys in, uh, your band, and utilizing uh, all the entertainers, like, with your equipment, or do a lot of people... Uh, do separate setups and if like a dj is using a separate setup than the band uh is there anything you do to try to make it a little bit more seamless instead of you know music only playing from one side of the room when the dj is on and then when the band is playing it's more centered and playing everywhere i, I think it depends on uh how big a of a part is that dj you know if they have their special dj guy who is an equal part of their entertainment to the band then likely they will uh, bring their own sound system and have their own kind of feel. If it's something where a DJ is coming in, uh, we've had somebody who like their best man is a professional DJ, but they want our band to do the majority of the songs and everything like that. So um, that's something where you and I would communicate and say, uh, you know, you'd plug in with our system. We'd find out, you know, what it is that you need technically to make that happen. Um, and then, so it's a smooth transition, but that's the biggest thing is work the stuff out ahead of time. Um, so that you're not on stage trying to figure out what you need and even little details, like you need a table, you need, um, you know, different things like that. Think through those things so we can make it as easy as possible. But a lot of times if it's a, a thing where they have this, um, you know, special DJ and this is a big part of their program. We did a, a wedding where they had an Armenian. Uh, the guy had a, um, I think it was a dobro, and he had a, a piano player guy who sang. And we just had it worked out ahead of time. 
what equipment they need to plug into, what cords do they need. So when it came to the wedding, boom, we went right into that. And within five minutes, we had this guy up and singing. Um, so it's all about communication. You know, if there's something that we're doing an event together, um, then you have to be uh, ready for that. And one more thing I would also say to DJs too, is to just like people that are actors, sometimes you're on stage doing Shakespeare. And sometimes you're doing some uh, movie with uh, Pauly Shore. You know, it's a big goofy comedy type of thing. And the, the real professionals know the difference. They know how to switch gears. And like, this is not the time to talk like this and I'm gonna go, you know, this is more of a formal type of situation. It's a black tie event. I'm gonna dress the part. I'm gonna change the way I speak to people, you know, and, and all those types of things. So your ability to know what you're walking into, know who your audience is, know what kind of music it is, what kind of vibe it is, what the goal, not your goal, but the goal of the people who hired you, what their goal is, what do they want to get out of you, and then work towards that. But if you try to, oh, I know what's best for this. I'm I'm, I'm DJ Apocalypse and I'm going to, you know, put my little stamp on this gig. That's not what it's about. And you're not going to win that battle. You're going to lose that because they don't care about, it's just the same way that we fall in love with our website or some some cool logo thing that we came up with that if our clients don't like it, it doesn't matter, right? So, so figure out, do your homework. What is this gig? What is this event about? Is it a wild kind of backyard wedding? Is it, is it a real uh, formal 100-year um, you know, anniversary of this company? The more you know kind of what you're walking into and you play that role, that's where you're going to find your success. Now, Dave, if uh, a DJ company, let's say they are like, hey, we're the one providing sound and uh, they want you to hook into their system, do you work with them or you prefer to use your system because you know well, you have? We, yeah, we have like three vocalists, three horns, piano, bass, drums, guitar, a violinist who plays percussion. Um, and so it would have to be a pretty uh, elaborate system to be able to accommodate us. Um, so typically, you know, it'd be more like the other way around. I mean, if, if we only have one opportunity, we'll, we'll deal with what we have. Uh, but um, typically we'd have the big master sound system that can accommodate a DJ much easier. And that's one of the things that, you know, I know a lot of DJs run small. I see a lot of guys running like, you know, six channel mixer. We're not talking about a six channel little mixer. We're talking like a 32 channel mixer because you're dealing with, yeah. you're dealing with, you know, a drum yeah, kit, yeah, you're right. dealing with all this equipment, you're dealing with monitors. You're dealing with, you know, they're doing in ear monitors. I do doing stage monitors, doing a combination of both. You have your mains. And again, I know I have some people in here who are have done music for bands, but that's some of the things you have to think about. Do you want to deal with all that? Do you want to deal with everything there? Now, someone asks, does your company provide lighting? Yes. Okay. We and you have stage. someone run into DMX. Uh yes, we do have stage lighting. We don't do a uh, laser uh, show or anything like that, and uh, but it is a nice wash for the stage. Um, so yeah, we take care of that. We don't do stuff for the dance floor, or we don't uh, perform on a cloud or anything like that. We're not that fancy, uh, but uh, <laughs> there's a lot of special effects that that certainly people use. But uh, yeah, we just do a nice clean uh, white uh, stage stage lighting and everything like that. But you know, I mean, if everything that you're bringing, if that's, if your lighting system um, is something that enhances your show and, and enhances what the vibe that the couple is looking for, absolutely, you know, bring all that stuff. Um, and, but if you're doing the more stuff you bring, make sure you clear all that with your venue. So like we need two 20 amp circuits and uh, we have plated places where, they had all this other, uh, you know, uh, DJ booth and this other DJ, uh, uh, um, like a photo booth thing. And then they had some other thing and they blew the power, you know. And so our horn section kept playing. Uh, but um, make sure you check with the venue to make sure they have the circuit stuff ready to go and know what, know what your system requires. And I'm sure you guys do that stuff already, but... 
you know, you never quite know what venue you're walking into, especially some of these, you know, older suburban places uh, that may not have the most up to date systems. Um, and, and they're certainly not going to, you know, come up with a new electrical system to meet your needs, but maybe you bring a different level amp or a different level speakers, things like that to kind of deal with. So you're not walking in and being like, whoops. You well, know, plus also understand, like, like you said, asking about power, but make sure you're self-reliant also bringing the extension cords and gaffer tape to tape down the cords and covers to make sure people are not going to trip over it. Uh, Taylor and Jordan, you have another question for Dave? It looked like you had another question there. No, I was probably yawning. Oh, okay. I thought you had another question there. <laughs> I saw, I saw you... Matt Matt dropped out. I saw he was at his storage place. I was hoping to get him in here to ask questions because, again, he deals with a lot of unique clients out there in uh, California. Um, I know he had some stuff going on tonight. He said he will be in for a little bit and – I just I saw him I saw him in his vehicle, but I didn't see him able to uh, ask him to ask questions. Uh, Dwayne, do you got any more questions for Dave here? Mm, not that I, none that I can think of. Those was the my my burning questions I had for him. Since that was like it seemed like that was a new trend. I guess that's something that's happening over wherever they are, like New Jersey, North Carolina. I was just wondering. Yeah, that's, yeah and that's that's a the tricky thing is is like. And uh, we've done things like that before, but there's nothing in, and I love DJs and stuff, but there's nothing like having a full horn section and three vocalists and a killer rhythm section, you know, that, that, that full orchestra sound of like having the horn section on the dance floor and having the vocalists have like that kind of connection. And um, it's just a different kind of thing, you know, and, and some people are, are using to save money, I guess, to use uh a DJ and sax, but it's still not quite the same thing as having that live human experience. And I think the best DJs are not only, I mean, anybody, as you know, people can buy the best sound, sound system, the most expensive sound system, but they're not great at picking out songs. They don't know how to go from one song to another. They don't know how to get out of the song and how to read the crowd and how to you know, get out of this and keep the beats going. And, you know, it's just like people that buy the most expensive cameras in the world, photographers, sorry, but they don't know how to, they don't have the eye or they don't have the composition skills to take great photos. So you could be a multimillionaire and buy the, the uh, most expensive Sony uh, Nikon camera you can buy. But if you don't have the skills to use it and you know, some DJs that are just all about the equipment, right? But how about people that are all about the music, right? And and sometimes people, you see them, you know, and they have this the kind of beat up old equipment, but they're fantastic DJs. And why is that? Because they understand music and they understand the reaction of, uh, of, of music and the power of music. And um, that's why I think, you know, people like me and Dwayne, you know, they have a ton of experience. We know how to read a crowd and we know how to like get in, in and out of songs. And that's to me what a great DJ is like, and, and keep this in mind when you go and you spend all this money and all this great equipment, which is fantastic, but people are not buying when they hire you, they're not buying equipment. They're not mm -hmm. even buying the fact that they're dancing more. What they're buying is the memory on Sunday morning. How was that wedding last night? That's what they're buying. And when people buy a gallon of paint, they're not buying a gallon of paint, they're buying painted walls. So keep, keep people in mind that that is what people are hiring you for. Not the fact that you've got the XJs 3, 4, 740 and you just got the upgrade because they don't care. Nobody cares, right? They read, if it helps them, you know, get better clarity of sound, great. But they don't need to know um, about what chords you're using and how you've got this new mixing board. And it, they care about the results of having all that stuff, right? It's like one of the things, uh, another thing I always say uh, here on the show is that, you know, people don't care what the plumber brings in for tools. They just want right. their sink to work. They want, you know, their toilet to flush. They want, you know, the water to flow. They want the, the sink to drain. So they don't care what tools you use. Now, is there, you know, proper look of things? Yes. You want to, you know, have a nice look, 
but even with a basic system, you had basic sound. You had, uh, I, like, I know Cool Thing has the uh, Eons from JBL. Uh, if you have a set of Eons, you have a nice speaker stand. You wrap the cords nicely. You have a nice presentation. Does it sound good? Yes. But the thing is that, you know, again, you want that little present a nice look to it. But at the end of the night, people will also remember, hey, the DJ looked cool. But also the music was great. We have fun time. It was a party. And that is a, is a cool uh, thing to know and a crucial thing to know that, you know, as a DJ or a band or anyone who's providing any kind of musical uh, entertainment, how does your event flow? It, if you look at any um, big headliner, you look at, doesn't matter, it's country, pop, whatever, you, you go anywhere, those people who are bringing in the names, you know, and I'm, 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 you know, I'm Taylor Swift, I'm this, I'm that. And you're bringing these people in there. They're coming in there, not just to see you, but they're having a fun time with you and enjoying the show. What did Taylor sing? Did she sing her, one of her new songs? She wanted her old songs Are people singing along with her. What was the event like? Why are people, why are people going to Taylor Swift's uh, um, concerts is because of the fact that that concert is very, very, very not only important to them, but they have fun at it. They enjoy themselves. And that is very crucial. When Dave and his group is up there, he has the singers, he has the horn section, he has it. Or even a guy up there doing acoustic music. Let's say Dave has a small little gig. It's it's, it's a small wedding. They have like a, a acoustic person and they have, you know, maybe a, a singer singing a little bit for part of it. You're still working with his group. And they're doing, you know, cocktail hour and dinner. And you're still going to work with them. You, you, you want to make sure that they shine as well as you shine. And it doesn't matter what level you're doing. It matters at the end of the day. Wow. That person was a great singer. They sung all these great songs. They sound fantastic. They were just really, really nice. They smiled. They were happy. Wow. I, I want to have them for my event. I want to have them for my dinner. I want to have them you know, every weekend at my house just to sing because they're a great singer. That right there separates, you know, the good bands, the good DJs and the good people versus the ones who just, you know, they don't care. They kind of phone it in. And that's one thing you don't want to do is phone in an event. Uh, DJ but, Bradley, uh, any other addition? Well, oh, I have one more. I did have a question when okay, you were talking. Okay, go ahead. You were talking about reading the room. Do you all, with a live band, do you all take requests or do you all, when they hire you, they you all have a, a specific sound that they know that's what we're going to get and you just stay within that? It's a good yeah. question, Dwayne. And what we do is we take their um, preferences for uh, our styles of ours so they can say, we love Motown, play these six, but not these two. We love Beyonce, play these four, dedicate this to my sister. Then these are specific songs to play or not play. And then based on that, we create what's called a set list. And we kind of march through that. But what our sound guy does is he takes a small whiteboard and our, uh, I mean, not sound guy, but our uh, song leader, our vocalist, and he watches the crowd, and he will pick the next three or four songs based on how people are reacting. And so it uses those songs, their preferences, and but we play them in different types of places. So if somebody comes up and they request a song that's on their do not playlist, you know, also you know, we can say like, oh, we play another song like that with a lot of the same notes in it, you know. <laughs> Anyway, we don't say that, but um, we, we do try to accommodate that here's another song that's similar to that, that the bride and groom, you know, do want us to play. Would that be okay? Um, so, so generally, I try to accommodate people if it's a reasonable request and isn't on their uh, do not playlist. And sometimes I will throw it over to the DJ if it's something that we don't know. And that's the great thing about having a DJ <coughs> is that you guys are never limited to what you can play, right? You can play mm -hmm. anything. So, so, um, but I, it's a balance between you got to make sure you're not uh, you're accommodating the client first, and if it's a reasonable request um, that's going to get people dancing, that is, you know, not on their do not playlist. Yeah, we're happy to play it. And that's one of the things it's always about what the client wants. If if is a, if you're doing a wedding, it's about the couple. If it's a corporate gig. It's about the mood they're trying to set. Are they have do they have potential clients there? Their clients, 
you know, a lot of times you have a corporate event, let's say at a car dealership or at a uh, medical uh, group who are doing yeah. something and you're doing sound for that event, they may have their clients there. What kind of mood you're trying to set? What kind of feel you're trying to set there? So those are things that us as professionals should be talking to our clients and find the information out. If it's a birthday party for someone, it, you know, what are some of the things they only they like, but what are the things they don't like? Plus also what kind of mood they're trying to set? What, what is what is the event? You need to set yourself up for success for that event. DJ yeah. Brentley, is there anything else you'd like to ask Dave before he goes? No, I think I'm good. I mean, I've been on both sides of this coin. I just now honestly choose not not to play. Okay. But the thing is that you wouldn't have no problem playing with Dave if you if you were hired and someone say, hey, I need you to uh, play with a band. That I can do. It's, you know, Mando are upright, but I'm kind of, and my daughter's mom and I were really kind of talking about it, that she's like, why have you quit? I'm like, I'm over it. I got as far as I'm going to, you know, the biggest stages that I'm ever going to see, I saw in my 20s and 30s. Uh, yeah. Anything I had to prove to myself, I did already. And if I strum a little bit here and there at home, that's about all I really care to do anymore. Especially when there's, you know, I, I, I can go out like, a, here, you saw the pics from last weekend. It was an utter you know, insert, you know, blow horn, you know, sound here show. And that's become like, you know, better than any musical gigs I've ever played, better than any wedding I've ever done is to be able to have that crowd, you know, 500, a thousand heads in front of you and completely manipulate and control what they're doing. And to see them respond just like you want to. I, yeah, you, I, I could never get that when I was playing live as a musician. And that's the thing is that you have to be happy. You have to do yeah. what you feel is best for your business, what best fits you as a professional. And if it's, you know, doing, again, working with a band, not working with a band, whatever you feel is best. But the thing is that still treat others with respect, treat others oh, yeah. professionally. And I know, I know Brentley does that because again, he's been on both sides. I know Taylor and Jordan does that. I know Dwayne does that. I know Tommy does that. I know Matt does that. I know Jeff, who unfortunately is not here tonight, does that. Uh, you know, I, I do that uh, coming from a corporate level, uh, working in corp for corporations, uh, as long as long with my wife, uh, work for corporations. It's one of the things that once you understand certain things to how to treat people, you always treat people with respect. And the thing is that, you know, I, I really do thank for Dave coming in here tonight, spending his hour with us on a thir uh, Tuesday night. I was going to say Thursday night, <laughs> on a Tuesday night uh, here, enjoying himself uh, with us. And I want to thank him for coming in here tonight and having some fun. And I thank you all for, uh, uh, if I could talk right, for saying stuff in the chat. And I got a few things here for people who are saying. Um, let's see here. Uh, do you have specific DJs you work with or are possibly hire DJs that will work for you? So you said, Dave, you have DJs that work for you, we, correct? We do have some. If, if you want to send me your information, I'd be happy to take a look at that. It's david at drsmusic.com. And our website is drsmusic.com. And you can follow us on Instagram. We have a pretty good following there. Um, and, uh, yeah, anything that I can do to, to help you guys or if you think of something later that uh, you need some help, I think the biggest thing – you know, for DJs is like everything related, and I tell this to musicians too, everything related to you is saying something about you, how you dress, how you respond, how your website looks, how your equipment looks, how you talk to people, how you take care of your, uh, uh, you know, your own dress, uh, what kind of shoes you wear, what time you show up, how you clean up after the stage, and also, you know, I'm very respectable about the, uh, the people that even like, you know, service meals there. I always tip the staff there. I always thank people like the valet guy. And I, you know, because we're all part of this, this team. And some people see us as just kind of servants. But I think when you, if you want respect, you treat people like respect, uh, with respect. And uh, make sure you are the, the pro that you want to be and understand what your role is. And, and Thursday, we're playing for the Yale Law School. And so that is a certain, 
feel to it. It's certainly the longest contract I've ever had. Uh, but uh, I know what the role of that, what we're going to do for that. It's going to be a jazz trio, and it's not on to put on a John Coltrane concert. It's to, to, to play some background jazz for their specific goals for that night. Um, so that's that's what we'll do. And the more you can kind of know what you're walking into, giving yourself the best chance with by having the best equipment, maintain your equipment, which includes your car. <clears throat> and then you've got giving yourself the best chance, you know, get quality clothes, get them all cleaned and everything. And that's going to put you in the best position to do your best work. Don't let that kind of stuff get in your way of, of being being your best, making sure everything related to you is, is on point and uh, you're fully prepared. And so when you walk into that venue, you're, you will understand kind of what the loading is, the parking, the setup, where to set up, and make sure your equipment is all working and tested early so you can fix it if you need to. And then, um, you know, think of like, how can I help? Well, how can I make people happy? How can I get people dancing? How can I help the bride and groom? Something that maybe is, is not even a uh, uh, something in your parameters. But the more you do that, the more valuable you are and the more they will really appreciate your talents and you as a person. That's very, very true. And I will tell you this, like, like I said before, I've known Dave for years. He has a lot of uh, wisdom. Make sure you follow him over on Instagram. I will, uh, for you guys on YouTube, I will put a link down below for his website and his Instagram handle. So you can go follow him on Instagram. He has a lot of great photos over there, a lot of great uh, stuff. He does go live on Instagram. Dave, I'd love to have you back here again, hopefully in not too distant future. Anytime. And, and if you guys want to email me with any questions, you know, I'd be more than happy to help. And that's one of my goals is to help musicians and DJs and uh, everybody in the wedding industry to make, make it a better experience for us and our clients. And uh, I know it's easy to feel kind of isolated a lot of times. Um, you know, as independent artists and stuff, but you know, there's a lot of people that have benefited from all the great work you guys are doing. So, uh, remember that. And again, some, thank you very much, Dave. Thank everyone else for coming in tonight. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy yourself. And tonight I'm going to actually have Tommy, Tommy, take us out tonight. All right. Thank you for uh, hopping on the round table tonight. Everybody have a great week and we'll see you again next week. See you guys later. Have a good one. Okay. Thanks guys.